All right. Perfect, David. Thank you, sir. Way to share. Yeah, you guys drop your websites, drop your emails, however you want to collaborate. You can drop your socials. This is meant for you guys to engage, to interact. Today is a Q&A day, but I'm going to be quick about getting into uh, bridging the digital divide strategies for empowering the underserved communities. Here's why I'm bringing this up. Just to be clear, as I said in multiple times through the other presentations, the why behind the book Media Company in a Box, which is now an immersive experience on my website with the uh, three other books. And this week we're adding six more, which is super exciting um, to be able to publish six books in the way that we're doing it. I'm grateful for that because this is how we serve the underserved. Uh, but this is also how we serve the voiceless by publishing books for people that don't have the ability to publish their own books. For instance, Suffer Me Greatly is a book we just published and that um, is featured on our website, but a prisoner wrote that. A prisoner who doesn't have access to the internet, the real world, even a computer, anything. So this is something that we do as a service. And the reason I'm bringing this up is not to brag or say, hey, look at me at all, because Look, anytime you decide that you want to serve with your life, there are sacrifices that have to be made. That they, they're sacrifices that get to be made. Um, and so this is not about bragging or anything like that. Um, but there is an opportunity for all of you. The underserved communities are an untapped market. And that's probably a bad way to say it, but because I'm part of that to some degree with being disabled, uh, at least for now, because I'm going to heal, dead gummit. Um, I'm going to heal. But <clears throat> the underserved uh, are a group that has been ignored. And because they've been ignored, other people have talked for them. In other words, we let the news main news channels, we talk, we let the people that we elect talk for us. And they may not necessarily resonate with our viewpoint, or they may not even speak in our language, or may they may not even be representing how we how we feel about a particular topic. And and so, some of the tools and the things that we're going to go over today um, are going to show you some of the opportunities available, not just for the underserved, but for those of you that are not underserved. You're going to see an opportunity of how you can serve the underserved in a very unique way that will benefit you. And so is that self-serving? I don't know, maybe. But to prime example of this, most websites are not accessible. And when I say accessible, the blind can't read it. And I know you're like, well, the blind, the blind reading a website? Well, actually the blind can read websites with certain technologies, but also there's a responsibility on our side to be able to make our websites adaptable so the blind can see our sites. So we're gonna get into some of that, um, but thank you for being here. Also, SCORE, SCORE organization who is uh, putting this on, thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, this has been an honor for me. This is my dream to teach all of this. And um, I'm grateful for all of you who have attended and have been a part of this. Um, especially putting up with my trimmers and, you know, I haven't been at my best. It's been a really weird <laughs> month to say the least, but uh, nonetheless, I'm grateful for you here and let's get into this before I just keep talking. Oh, let me finish what I'm saying about score. Um, if you're out there and you have the bandwidth, you have the ability, you have the time, to be able to serve. You're looking for a place to maybe sharpen your skills as a mentor or a coach, or you just have some wisdom that you want to share. And in your heart, you, you may not be able to give money to organizations, but you can serve. I believe with all my heart in the kingdom, um, not to be religious here, but I believe that time, talent, and treasure all is the same thing in kingdom econo economics. And a lot of where we're going is more, well, a kingdom way of living. 
whether you're religious or not, because time, talent, and treasure will have the same value, especially when you're contributing to some of these ecosystems that are being formed right now. So volunteer with SCORE if you can. If you're looking for a place to give, so into SCORE because they're a great organization and they've been around since the 60s and they are changing a lot of lives. So they're amazing. I'm grateful for this opportunity, grateful for the Better Business Bureau uh, for letting me speak there the last two days. And then, of course, all of you for being here. Thank you. All right, let's get into it. So we're going to go over a little bit of understanding the digital divide, some of the limitations we have, identifying opportunities in the changing media landscape. There's so many opportunities. Developing skills for the digital economy. There's some things that we all need to learn and study. Uh, one of the most amazing organizations that I'm actually not officially announced yet, but I, I won't say their names. Uh, Mai's here. Mai knows. Um, and the there's a really amazing organization that serves the disabled communities, and they're a blockchain uh, organization. Like They teach and train people all things blockchain so that they can take a part of this new economy. So learning the blockchain, we're going to get into that later, is going to be super important for you all because really everything's going to be attached to that blockchain. I mean, everything. If you've heard of the Internet of Bodies or the Internet of Things, <laughs> even... That's all attached to the blockchain, too. But, of course, the big part is fostering inclusivity and accessibility in media. The digital divide signifies the disparity between individuals with access to modern information and communication technologies and those without. Income inequality, geographic location, uh, age demographics and educational disparities, including variations in digital literacy education and access to technology in school. So these are some of the things that separate. And there's some statistics later in the slide that are kind of shocking. And, and if you're American, which I, I'm assuming that most of you are, that are here are American, I do know that some people are not from America that are here, uh, but they're Americans now. But we are very blessed to live here. We are very blessed to live in America, to have access to all the things that we do. And sadly, we're not taking advantage of all the resources that are available to us to learn. And yet, if you look overseas, like in Africa and Asia, even in Mexico, they are so far ahead with their training and their knowledge base and understanding where these future systems are going. Um, Limited access to technology restricts job prospects and hinders economic advancement for underserved communities. So as much as the opportunities that are available in the fourth industrial revolution for us, it's those that have the internet. And some of these internet statistics that we'll get into are kind of alarming. <clears throat> So unequal access to technology and education negatively affects learning outcomes and widens the achievement gap among students. So look, I remember, I don't know about you, but school districts and how schools are zoned, like even that in itself is a travesty. And some of you can speak to that better than, than I can. But when I started to learn about how some of the school zoning works and hearing stories about kids in the inner city in Chicago and what it takes for them to get to school. Like, I mean, it's, it's unfair. Like it's really unfair. And I don't know what the solution is, but what, well, actually I kind of do, you know, having access to the technology matters, having access to the internet matters. Most of the technologies that we can use are available for free or really, really inexpensive. However, if you don't have a steady internet connection, that makes it very, very challenging. And so there's areas around the world that just have no internet or have no internet that would allow them to actually take advantage of some of these tools that we have. So again, if you're in America, there is no excuse to not be learning all of this information because most of it's out there for free. Um, lack of digital access limits engagement in civic activities reducing participation in community affairs and decision-making processes. <clears throat> mm -hmm. 
All right. So identifying opportunities in the changing media landscape. So we've talked about AI. You've heard about AI to the point that some people believe that AI is becoming a god. AI is not God. That's okay. <laughs> That's a good thing. Um, but that said, AI is also not as great as ever. So a lot of people make it. However, it's not a technology that we can ignore. In fact, a lot of the areas, I mean, think about this. How many of you have said, I would love if I could hire four, four employees? Or if I had two more employees, I would be able to do this. Or if I had a copywriter, I could do this. If I had a graphic artist, I could do this. If I had an editor, I could do this. Now all those excuses are gone because of AI. There's so many different AIs you can use for all of the things that I mentioned. So learning about the different chatbots, taking the time to learn proper prompting, is a huge, huge asset for you to be able to use AI the right way, but don't let AI become your God. Because if you let it become your God, your gifts and talents will be robbed. You'll quit using your brain. You'll quit tapping into your natural talents or the, the realness of who you are. So use it responsibly. It's kind of like the internet or social media. I just got back on social media. I already have anxiety. I already go, oh my gosh. I can already feel bipolar being on there. Like, I, is this even healthy for me? But it's free marketing. Do I use it? Do I use it not? Here's what I want to say. Nothing's worth robbing your peace over. Nothing. Not if, if, if pursuing all of these technological advances don't bring you peace, don't. Nothing is worth that. Your peace matters above all. Now, I think in a peaceful state is where we start to realize, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> this is the next step I take. This is the leap of faith I take. Anyway, uh, virtual reality and immersive storytelling. I am, I'm going to give you some commentary here. I'm so sick and tired of all of the, that's another thing, being back on social media, I can see how people edit their videos and see all of the stickers and all the moving flashing lights. If <laughs> if I didn't have, what's that when you get the uh, epilepsy <laughs> from the flashing lights? Um, so I, like, I don't like all of that, but the, 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 the benefit of it was what it was leading us to was immersive media. So it was a natural progression that we would have these stickers where we can touch the screen and buy in real time. The platform maestro that I told you about has that technology and it's amazing. But, um, the, the next step with that, of course, is VR and augment, augmented reality. So these experiences that you would do it in a broadcast, there's no reason now that you can't take them into virtual reality and change the way you're telling your story. I think I used this example last week and I was talking about cartoons and how cartoons can get away with saying the things that we can't. Um, well, with VR, there's, there's, there's not really any rules right now, except for the people that create the world. So if you want to talk about some hard issues, some difficult, challenging issues that you feel led to talk about, and you think, well, maybe my face saying it is not the right face to say that. Let me just tell you that <laughs> I've said a lot of really wild and crazy things. Some, A lot of it came true in some of my predictions and some of it didn't. But nonetheless, there are things that I wouldn't necessarily say now, or I wish I could have said behind an avatar or something like that. And it's not that I fear truth, it's just that, well, some things don't really need to be said, at least by a human. So in VR, <laughs> you could create, <laughs> you could create a character to tell those stories for you. That's just an idea. But at the same time, it's another way for you to create immersive interactive experiences with other people. And there's a whole untapped market and revenue streams that are waiting there for you. So I was mentioning about blockchain. Those of you that care about protecting your intellectual property, those of you who want to protect your, uh, if you're worried about censorship, those of you that don't want your content stolen, those of you who want to create your own secure communities and ecosystems, learn the blockchain. Uh, there's a great organization called D DLT Valley in, so uh, they're not Saudi Arabia, they are in Dubai, but they're global. And 
I, I can't offer this to you. If any of you are looking to learn the blockchain and you have some type of disability, whether it's mental or physical, please email me after the class because I can give you a special invite for you to get very special training with the blockchain so you can learn not just about content rights, but also monetization and how you can put um, this new skill set to work. And what you'll be shocked by is all you're really going to do is tap into things that you already know. In fact, you could have already created a bunch of stuff, but being in the blockchain and using virtual reality, for instance, that just gives you a whole other wide open playing field uh, of, for you to take it, you know, to take advantage of. There's monetization opportunities, but there's also value opportunities. There's ways to serve in that capacity also. Virtual counseling, stuff like that. Anyway, creating inclusive media platforms, fostering user-generating user content, targeting niche markets, and personalizing experiences through data analytics. So, one you, the thing about a niche is niches get you to focus so hard uh, you know onto one subject and you try to find it's like becoming an amazon bestseller is you got to find those keywords and you got to find the categories that give you the best chance of becoming a bestseller that's kind of part of the game of being an amazon bestseller there's more to it than that of course but that is one of the games um as I've shared before I'm more I believe in multi niche because I don't want to pigeonhole myself into only having to be one person. Because the truth is most of you all don't know who I am. Some of you do, but I'm different. I'm different. I have disassociative identity disorder and ASD on top of tremors that are, you know, trying to get better. And like, I'm different. I think differently. I see the world differently. I react differently to things. I, I'm, I'm not for everyone. And so at the same time, for a long time, when I was creating content, people just saw me as this spiritual warrior that's trying, you know, trying to make a difference in the world and please God and, and, you know, trying to use my story to, to impact people, to show people that there's a way out, to show people that, um, you know, that they can do anything like <laughs> like all the stuff that that plagued them and killed them and tried to crush them, like to teach that all of that stuff that try to kill you gets to be your revenge on the enemy when it doesn't kill you. And you use all of that for good when you use your heartbreak, when you use your 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 failures and your mistakes, all of that. Right. So I got pigeonholed into that where. I was always having to show that I was recovered, I was healed, and this is all I could talk about. But the problem is that I'm not always healed and I'm not always, you know, super sharp and motivational. Sometimes I'm sad and sometimes I'm hurting inside and sometimes I'm more introspective and I have a different view of the world that is equally real to, my, to the world that I see when I'm happy and euphoric. My point is this, if you niche yourself down into this a category where you can only be motivational, inspiring. You're going to lose your audience the minute you show them that you're vulnerable and sad. I mean, think about it. Think about in relationships. One of you loses your confidence. How does that affect your relationship? So anyway, the point is, I almost went off on a tangent there, but... A multi-niche lets you showcase more of yourself. And as a creator, you don't get as exhausted because trying to fake enthusiasm or trying to fake that it's motivational and you've committed, you've committed to creating every day. You've cr created or you've committed to doing a live stream every day. In a live stream, you get away with showing more of your personality. But when you're doing podcasts and it's a focused subject, what if you don't talk? feel like talking about that subject that day. So a multi-niche platform allows you to showcase more sides of your personality. If you're a hopeless romantic or you're a dating coach or you're a mental health specialist or you're an addiction specialist, whatever, you can showcase that. But then at the same time, you're also really into women's sports.
and you want to talk about that, you can do that. It, it's up to you. Anyway, uh, new business models, subscription-based, everything is micro sub subscriptions and subscriptions and then crowdfunding and microtransactions. And it's just, it's, it's wild, but this is part of the future. And um, one of the things that I will tell you is that part of the new business model, in my opinion, is you provide value and you have to give away, you have to give away stuff to get stuff. And I know it's probably been that way, but it will be more so than ever. So this is why I'm telling you the value, you should, you should, you should protect your intellectual property, but use clips and samples and other things to uh, to to provide value and then go entertain and have fun on social media is using it marketing, but on your platform, secure your intellectual property, secure your creations. Um, so these are some skills that you should learn. Coding and web development. Look, Python is a great thing to learn. And by the time that this is finished, I'm sure that that would even be outdated. Uh, technology, it's all moving fast. I mean, there's codeless websites now. And it's becoming easier, but learning web development, learning web development is so important because instead of having an office building, your building will be your platform. And listen, I'm not, this is kind of, I've been in trouble for being a conspiracy theorist in my past, but there's going to be another shutdown. <laughs> there's going to be another shutdown. There's going to be some type of crazy that happens. And you know, we're it, 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 just the world's going to be different. If you know anything about Agenda 2030, which is on the United Nations website, if you look at any of these plans, by the way, where all of these ideas were kind of born from other than visions, like you're going to realize that the whole world and the way that we do things changes. So the days of office buildings, have you been in a mall recently? The malls are empty. Buildings are empty. Office buildings are empty. Things are changing. We're going to be working from home. We're going to be, I mean, I know that we've got a taste of that during COVID, but that's going to come back and you're going to see our businesses are going to be digital real estate or on digital real estate, which starts with your website, your Web3 platform. Um, digital marketing, social media management. You know, I, I've said this all the time, I'm not a big social media guy, and I'm not. I got back on to take advantage of some of the free marketing, and to be honest, I miss some of my old friends. Um, so, I mean, social media is a great tool while it's free, but I'm going to tell you that even that's going to change uh, soon. Social media is going to be wildly different soon, and <clears throat> it, this is why it's better just to build your platform now. Use social media to be social, have fun, and promote what you're doing on your platform. Give reason, give people a reason to come to your platform. And you are that reason because your gifts, talents, and intellectual property has value that people want and need. Learning data analysis and how to interpret it, super important because that's going to tell you how well you're doing and what you should adjust and what you should change. Um, the skills. You, the, the news, like every, so education, I know they say you should always be coaching yourself up and always learning and doing personal development and reading and growing your brain. That's always been talked about. But in this new world that we're going into, education will be as important as breathing. So because everything's going to change so fast and keep changing and keep growing. So it's going to be up to us to keep educating ourselves and learning how to work with all of these skills. Um, so resources for skill development. There, I just, so the, I told you about DLT Valley out of Dubai. They just got accredited by a Japanese university, um, their program. And then there's another group out of Africa that is now going to be working with them, another university. And so what's happening is you have all of these little ecosystems of people that are educating, and a lot of them are well-funded, well-designed, and here's the best part. They give it away for free. They give it away for free, these trainings, or it's minimal cost. The one thing that is so encouraging to me is that all of these 
tech gurus and the geniuses that are building the AIs and everything else. What's so special about it to me is the ones that really want to see the world change. They're giving away these courses for free. They're giving away PowerPoints for free. Like I'm not, by the way, like even though I give away all this stuff for free, like I'm not the only one. There's plenty of people that give away their content for free because they want you to be a part of it. There are people that are sincere about not wanting to leave you behind. How many of you have felt left behind before? Like it, it, it's an awful, awful feeling. And, but there's people desperately, I don't know if desperate's the right word, enthusiastically trying to give away all of their information so that you're ready to be a part of it. And here's the other part. These ecosystems that are forming and these groups, they're all over the place. They're like hiding in plain sight. LinkedIn is a great place to see the ecosystems. It's, it's pretty easy to point out who's doing what. But the cool part about the ecosystems are they let people in with a certain skill set, but they don't let 50 people in with that skill set. They let in one or two. But really, that's it, because time, talent, treasure means something in this new economy that we're going into, this new world. And so, you know, people want you to learn, they want you to be a part of it, and they want you to hit the ground running. And that's why they're giving away all of this information. Now, going to the AI and the robotics, if you haven't even done basic media stuff, can feel overwhelming. That's the the gap that I'm trying to bridge with Media Company in a Box, my book, and all of these trainings is to go, okay, it's great to learn AI, it's great to learn blockchain, it's great to learn NFTs and all that stuff, but that's not gonna do a lot of good for you if you don't have the basic media principles down because you're, you're gonna need the media and the media tools to make all that other stuff work for you. So I'm kind of the middleman here because I'm not an expert in AI. I know how to use it. I use it well, but I'm not an expert. I'm not an expert in any of this stuff. I'm a generalist and I learn in as much as I can every day to keep adding on to what I'm learning. That's hence now I'm going into specialized in the blockchain. That's one of the things that I start in July. Super excited about that. But Again, these basic things that we're going through are important for you to maximize this stuff that I'm telling you about now. Okay, um, so visual impairments, we talked about this. There's just gonna be regulations, like you know about the ADA. Um, there's now something for the internet. Um, there's an internet version of that where your websites need to be accessible for people that are blind, for people that don't hear well, or can't hear at all, or have cognitive disabilities. There is all kinds of um, different widgets and other things that you can plug into your website that will get you accessible and ready to go. Different price points, um, but do your research. If you have issues, you can call me on that. Turn. Oh, wait, I just skipped one. So the other motor disabilities, um, inclusive design principles where you can adopt universal design concepts uh, to create media content that is accessible and uh, user-friendly for all individuals. Uh, let's see, legal and ethical. So that's what I was just talking about. It's called the WCAG, uh, you, where you adhere to accessibility laws and fulfill the ethical responsibility of content creators to ensure in inclusivity. So the untapped market that I was talking about at the very beginning, right there, right there. The minute, I shouldn't say the minute, that's not, that wouldn't be accurate at all. Um, but the, um, when you make your website accessible, what you're doing is giving a whole demographic of people that normally wouldn't have access to your website access. And if you read what Google is saying about the accessibility laws, they're basically saying if your website's not up to date, they're not gonna show it to anyone. They're taking this serious. And again, ADA, they made businesses put ramps and change their stairs and walkways and entrances and everything, right? What do you expect for the digital economy? They want it to be accessible. So we get to make it fair for everyone else. 
This is a good thing. Let me go to the questions real quick. Um, thank you for sharing. Jose, thank you. Oh, I love this. You guys are all sharing your stuff. I love to see it. Okay, what's the Q&A say? Oh, that was just a test. All right, we'll keep going. Remember, this is going to be a Q&A. So if you guys have questions, start ramp throwing them out there. Um, we covered that. Fifty-seven percent of the global population doesn't have internet. Yikes! I mean, these stats are just insane um, to me. Basically, and we're gonna. I think I think there's a slide on here about this. I don't know if I took it out or not. I, who knows? I change these so much. Uh, you'd be sure. Oh. The, the amount we're going to I think we're going to see a slide in a second that shows the percentage of the lap like laptops, like how many people have computers in their home or a laptop versus phone. And those numbers alone are pretty alarming when you think about who has access and who doesn't. Um, so the impact on underserved communities. Limited access to online learning resources. Again, if you don't have proper Internet, it makes it really tough. If you don't know where to look, it's really tough. The good news is Google, Coursera, um, other groups like that, if you don't have the money to take trainings, you can get a scholarship. Now, they make you say that you're going to commit to it, but that helps. But again, if you don't have Internet, this makes it really, really challenging. Um, so lack of access to online job listings and remote work uh, opportunities, limits, employment options. You know, one of the things that I think has been really cool is Fiverr. Fiverr has been amazing to hire freelancers to do your work for a little bit, you know, less expensive than saying hire someone here in America. But the reason why that's paid off is for them, it was like a paid internship. This whole time, we've been training people in the Middle East and Africa and Bangladesh and all over the world how to do all of these media skills. And now they're going off and starting their own media companies because of what we taught them. So, you know, that has been a great equalizer. So where there was an internet before fast internet um, in some of those places, they struggled. But as the internet came in, these opportunities popped up. The internet is super important. And of course, Starlink, whenever it launches, uh, which is probably another form of Skynet, but that's a whole other conversation. Um, that's going to help eradicate this problem. I was talking to the University of Nigeria um, the other day, and you know they still don't have the internet that they need to be able to do a lot of these things. However, they're still learning blockchain. They're still learning all of that. In fact, I was in a class on Monday um, with this disability organization that I was telling you about at the beginning, and a gentleman in Africa, didn't have a computer to show his PowerPoint, like what I have here. He did it on his phone and did a screen share. And was it as big and pretty and visually stunning and all that stuff? Well, I'm not saying mine's visually stunning, I'm just saying, but compared, it was like the difference of writing on fine felt paper versus toilet paper. I mean, if you were gonna look from a quality standpoint, however, as I've said many times before, don't sweat humble beginnings. Because if you put your faith in action, good things are going to happen for you. And yeah, sure, faith journeys are tough and there's obstacles and your faith is going to be tested, 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 tested. And every time you think the test is over, you get hit with another test. It sucks, right? But if you do the best with what you have, good things will happen. Put your faith in action. So, even though there's challenges and there's this lack of, a, you know, to have access for a lot of these programs and other things, we don't have that problem here. So there's no excuse to not take advantage of it. Um, healthcare disparities and digital access. Um, you know, another thing, telemedicine, that you can't access that, which if you think about having to drive I mean, for me, when I had to go to the doctor, I had to drive 45 minutes and being in a car is like the worst thing ever for my tremors. It's terrible. It's the worst thing. 
ever. Like, and like since I've been in Oklahoma the last week or so, I haven't really spent much time in the car and it's helping. Um, but again, like the thought of somebody that was a quadriplegic or, you know, had cerebral palsy and you're having to haul a wheelchair, a power wheelchair, or a, a specialty mobility device, or, you know, and you have to make that long drive and, and that those drives aren't good for you. And especially if you're somebody that's wheelchair bound, I mean, it's just, it's tough. So having telemedicine care is such a blessing for so many reasons I won't need to go into right now, but you get the idea. Um, government services. Those of you that are on disability, or have applied for disability, and I don't know how many here have, I know my process, that is not fun. But because I had the internet, and I could sit there all day searching, finding the resources, finding everything I needed, that was amazing. Find groups, support groups, people I can collab with, I have that. But if you don't have the internet, that's a real struggle. And that affects your ability to, to have community, to build community. You know, especially in a world now that seems more isolated, I think that's going to change, but you know, it 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 would make it difficult to to bring people together, to find like-minded people, to find your tribe. Uh, the economic di uh, divide, barriers to e-commerce participation, online banking, and financial services restrict economic opportunities. Now that goes, it's pretty straightforward. So, mobile first. Um, Mobile first initiatives, potential for digital media to bridge gaps. Um, a lot of the corporations, like I was saying before, I'm kind of jumping around here, but the corporate, there's they're putting big money into helping and serving the disabled communities and the underserved. This is inspiring for all the th big things some people want to go after the big corporations about, and there's plenty of reasons to. Ah, they're doing some good things too. Um, there's government initiatives and national broadband plans. I know that that last one didn't get funded. So those of you that were getting discounted internet, that shut down. At least I know it did in Minnesota. Um, there's digital literacy programs, as I've mentioned before. This is a digital literacy program, and there are tons on LinkedIn. They're all over the place. Uh, community internet tr net projects. New Look up New York City Mesh. Uh, it's it, That's pretty cool. Uh, definitely worth checking out. And then mobile first. Uh, initiatives. So M-PESA's success in enhancing financial inclusion in Kenya through mobile technology. As I was saying, this guy was in, I think he was in Gambia. The, mo the guy was in the mobile phone or Uganda. I forgot which where he was at specifically, but I was blown away with what he did just on his phone and the way he was able to present professionally, even though he didn't have beautiful images, he was able to get it done. And because he was able to do that work and participate in the trainings in school from his mobile, he's learning the blockchain. And even though he doesn't have that internet access to do all the fancy fun stuff he wants to do yet, or have a computer to do it on, just think about it. He's prepared. He's prepared and ready to go. So the minute he gets his hands on that technology, he's going to be building and ready for the future. So it's easy to look at what you have and what you don't have but I think it's better to focus on what we do have and then use it to the best of our ability. Okay. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this. Uh, retail, yeah, retail, retail is gonna go nuts uh, because retail in, <laughs> in 3D and VR, and I mean, it's just, there's so many innovative ways to sell. And uh, as much as, TikTok gives me anxiety. Um, its shopping feature is amazing. So if you're somebody that creates products or has products or you want to get into the drop shipping game and you like to talk on camera, TikTok shopping is pretty next level. I mean, I always wanted to be a QVC host, an HSN host when I was growing up. And uh, I love pitching products. Seeing what's taking place on TikTok, it's like, well, why would you even want to be on QVC? Because you have this freedom to sell the way you want to sell. And that's way more fun when you can be authentic. Don't want to, so education, don't want to go over that. And I, this person, this will be available for you all. Um, I'm not trying to, uh, again, I want to have more Q&A today. 
So critical thinking and problem solving skills are essential for navigating complex digital challenges, analyzing information and making informed decisions. Look, critical thinking is absolutely a part of this because you have to discern whether or not you're going to create that content. Are you going to say what you're going to say? Are you going to put your name and face behind that? Are you going to share that news article not knowing if it's really true or not? Those things, there's a lot to consider. Um, this is the whole fourth industrial revolution is a breeding ground for proper communication and collaboration. In fact, it's less about cells and more about humans. It's more about you getting to be you, you showcasing your talents, your gifts, and your intellectual property. But everyone wants to collaborate, time, talent, treasure, so there's an exchange. You can find your group. You can find your people. It starts with sharing your truth. Adaptability, you gotta be adaptive. You gotta adapt. These changes are coming. You can't do anything about it. I, you just can't. I mean, you can pull the plug on the internet globally. That can happen. It could happen. Could happen. That would stop it, I think. I don't know. I don't know who actually has the plug for AI. But for right now, you should account on adapting, evolving, and being willing to learn. Because there is a lot to learn, a lot to learn, and these are just overviews. My favorite part, creativity and innovation. Holy geez. You're, you're, you were created by a creator to create. And we are going into a creator's economy. To me, that's like heaven on earth. Heaven on earth to be able to create for a living the way I envision, the way I feel led, whether it's through the written word, through audio, through a, 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 a video, whatever, virtual a virtual experience, a webinar. This is all available for you, but you can create and do it the way you feel led. I'm not the most polished presenter. I'm not the most polished of anything because, well, I you know sometimes it just I, I, I want to do things the way I feel led, right or wrong. That's this is how I am, and for me. That feels better than trying to adapt to what someone else wants me to be. Now, mind you, I love getting paid to go create for other people, but I really enjoy creating for myself more. And then creating for myself is, this is my art. I hope you appreciate it, whatever that may be. Let's check out this question. Yeah. You guys are still networking. I love it. Okay. Um, keep going. No questions yet, huh? Like, if you know how to use a computer, you're going to, I mean, again, these are all transferable skills that you probably already have. Customer service principles. Oh, Intom, you had a question. Given your experience, this is Intom's question. Everyone say hi to Intom. Given your experience in working with numerous organizations, institutions, and individuals in Africa, what or how do you think that Africa communities can be helped in bringing the IT infrastructure to the level that they would be a hub for servicing developed communities? That's a really good question. Um, first and foremost, they just need the internet, like steady, hardcore, you know, the same good internet that we have access to here. I think Starlink will provide that um, because I think Starlink, I, from my understanding, is going over Africa. Um, that's part of their solution. And I do know from speaking to the University of Nigeria and some of the other places that that infrastructure is being built, but it's not like a big mass plan. Like during COVID, it seemed like they were putting in 5G everywhere in all the towns and all the cities here in America. And, you know, there was a big check written for it, so to speak, or taxpayers paid for it or however that works. But there was a lot of money invested in that infrastructure. Africa doesn't have that same blessing as of yet. In fact, with Russia now, you know, coming in and replacing the American soldiers in several African countries, you know, I don't know if Russia's internet will come over because Russia does something completely different than everyone else. So 
again, I don't have all the facts on that, but essentially it's all about the internet. And you may not have to build the infrastructure necessarily, or at least crazy expensive, arch, uh, not architecture, the infrastructure, if you're using satellites. So to answer your question, it's really the internet is going to change everything. Having access to affordable internet that everyone can use is going to be a game changer. And once that happens, you'll see the big companies like Microsoft and Google and other, other companies come in and start giving computers and other resources. That's going to happen. Because here's the thing. We can't have the internet of things without everything being connected. That's why they call it the internet of things. Everything is connected. Good question. I hope I answered your question. Um, kind of gone over that already. <laughs> nice burger. Oh, now I'm hungry. Um, so remote work is available. If those of you that are disabled, those of you that they don't you don't work well with people or being around people. Remote work is awesome because you can pretty much virtually do anything. You can be a virtual producer. I, I mean, like where you're managing people's broadcasts and you get to act as a producer and you do it remotely. I mean, there's little gigs like that. You can do someone's editing, their blog writing, their social media. You guys know all, all of that stuff. But essentially, when you're operating with your gifts, talents, and intellectual property, those are all freelance gigs. Every one of them. So you're consulting, you know, you're going to sell a product or you're going to do an affiliate relationship. Essentially, you're freelancing because if you're going to do an affiliate relationship, you should have a content strategy around the affiliate, whether it's a live read during your podcast or just doing a quick video on YouTube or TikTok or Facebook or Twitter or whatever you like to use. So every everything is kind of a freelancer because you're independent. You're not working for anyone. You're working for yourself. Oh, going back to the challenges. The challenges are you have to be self-motivated. And it's really easy to get distracted on social media. I've been back two days. I, already, I told you this. I, had I have anxiety already from being on social media. And, and it's also there to serve as a distraction because I can notice I'm already going back for the dopamine hit. That's my own issue. Because I'm not saying you, but you know, if I had a job, I'd have someone monitoring my every move and going, uh, you're distracted, you're supposed to be working right now. So when you freelance and you're on your own, you're on your own. <laughs> so you get to be your own boss, make your own decisions, but you are responsible for yourself. All right, so we already talked about uh, industry certifications, online learning platforms. There are certifications you can get on LinkedIn. Course is it Corsa? C O U R S E A, I think it is. Um, a lot of the Google certifications run through that. They have a scholarship available. You can get real certifications from Google, Microsoft, and other places like that with that. So if you don't have the money to go to college or a special training, go look at the go look at the tech companies because they offer classes and certifications that you can use to help you get other jobs. There's boot camps, intensive programs. Um, you know, that's all pretty much common sense, free resources everywhere. Um, the Khan Academy, the MIT, OpenCourseWare, university level content, you, YouTube, YouTube has education. Free resources everywhere. Every single thing I learned about how to build a media company was free. Every bit of it, because I didn't have the money to learn. I had the I had the time. <laughs> I watched a lot of YouTube videos and experimented. I told you all about wealthy affiliate that helped for the first, like to get me off the ground. Um, of course, now you don't even need that because websites are built so easily. But it's still a great place to go. But there's free resources available, and you can learn everything for free. And at the and the other thing is. Say there's an event that you want to be a part of and you don't have the money to go, send them an email and ask if you could volunteer. Because sometimes even volunteering where you're sweeping the floors or picking up trash or moving chairs or, or just greeting people or passing out stuff, just being there and you can hear, 
If you can hear, you can learn. And if you see, you can also learn. It's a great way to learn event production. Of course, there's government and nonprofit initiatives. So we were talking about some of the stuff for visual aids, JAWS, MVDA, voiceover enabling, web browsing. That's how the blind see. Voice recognition, voice recognition software, Dragon. Dragon, gosh, I forgot about that one. Dragon's been around for a long time. It's really, really good. But there's so many voice recognition softwares out there that are just groundbreaking. Adaptive keyboards, input devices, eye tracking technology. Heck, the this computer, this eye that I'm looking at right here, it can, I mean, if you look at some of the patents, like, <laughs> this sounds kind of kooky, but it can read your it can read your mind. Um, so, and like when you load your face into an app, you know, when you take get up close, and it'll tell you to move closer, and then you turn your head, you do that. What do you think you're really doing? <laughs> so, these computers are smarter than we give them credit for. Uh, let's see. Coursera, thank you, Alex. I, It's Coursera. Thank you very much for that. Thanks for looking out. Um, so brain computer interfaces, AI powered predictive text, auto completion, smart home devices. Yeah, all this stuff is here. It is awesome. All right. Come on, where'd you go? Did, oh, there it is. So we got we went through this already. The all oh alternative text. Oh, so a good I a good thing for you to do um, is make sure your alt text is filled out for your images. It'll go a long way. It helps SEO. So some of your employment opportunities. These are jobs that are available for you. Web development design. Like if you master that, master how to build an all-in-one platform because that's where the future is going. Learn how to do it. You wanna make some money, learn how to teach media company in a box. Like the, learn the different packages, the different ways to do it, learn it, because there's a bunch of revenue built into that. And you can find the thing that you really specialize in and just go for it. My book is full of job opportunities, full of them. And so, and these are just an example. Creating content for people. I told you before, if you have a dream of being a, a, a talking head or a spokesperson for an organization, um, like one of the things that you can do is like if you, this is a chance, but if you have a dream of being a spokesperson, you can take your phone, record yourself talking, talk to a, you know, promote a product, promote a service, and just shout them out and tag them. And post the video. It may not go anywhere, but you can try because they may share your video. That could serve as free marketing for you. Because why? You're 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 promoting a product, and they're probably going to share it because you're talking about their product in a really clever way, and they want other people to see it. That's how you could build a following. You can do that with YouTube. I know other people that do that for YouTube. They just they'll record the video <laughs> and then send it with the YouTube link. And, it, it, the, and and they get that other company to promote them, promoting them, pr promoting them because it's a free commercial. And that's kind of a, a, a strange way to go about it, but you can do that. I, I mentioned before about the affiliate products. Or, you know, if you're wanting to collab with someone you, that you you really like and they have a bigger following than you and they may not give you the time or day, sometimes creating a video for that person and sending it to them can get you that collab opportunity. As I've gotten a few big guests that way. Um, but again, managing someone's content. So say you 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 love editing. Well, a video, you I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna manage your content for you. I'll cut the clips, I'll make the blogs, I'll do the the different posts, the different things. I mean, you can offer those services because these tools that are available. They kind of do some of the work for you that make it easy so you could rack in a bunch of clients. And a good way to gauge 
how much you should charge is go look at fiber. It's a good way to measure, in my opinion. Um, but if you're going to go in this business for content creation and management, guess what? You have to create content to promote it. Social media management been around forever, but it's not going to go away anytime soon. Digital marketing and SEO. SEO is a whole nother animal now. It's so different than it used to be. Um, of course, you can use chatbots to help you, which, you know, I what I do in my prompt is make sure that it's talking about the 2024 SEO regulations so that when I'm shaping my content, it's more geared uh, to what the search engines are search engines are looking for now. If, if you're a data analysis, I'm not. <laughs> but um, or you're good at creating visuals, PowerPoints, other things like that. Those are great, uh, great gigs. Why is this not wanting to work? Okay. So y'all, I've mentioned this before, but when we let the mainstream news be our voice and they're not really speaking for us, what are we doing? We're silencing ourselves. But the other problem is like we can take our power and say, all right, well, I'm going to go speak out on this and I'm going to share it on social media. Well, the thing is, is that, okay, you could build a community there. Yes. But then if you, you know, depending on what your initiative is and what goal or what you're trying to put a spotlight on in the shadow world, that platform may not like it very much. Or you could alienate some of the people that you love. So there is a, um, you know, we, we have to be careful how we use our voices, but, and this is part of media literacy and about how not only do we have to be careful what we share, but we want to make sure that what we're talking about is actually true or it's a personal experience or something like that. But this is how we get the truth out is not necessarily like we can talk about, you know, post stuff on social media. But if you really care about it, if you really care about that topic, create real content for it, not a post, because real content that you create can be used in a way that is evergreen. That's why you put it on your platform, because in social media, it's going to have the lifespan of the news feed. But when it's on your platform or your website, it's evergreen, meaning it's forever. So if you have an important message or activism that you or something you want to take a stand on, do it on your own platform. And yes, you can share those links on social media. But you want them coming back to your website. Everything that you post, in my opinion, should have the intention of getting people to come back to your website, unless if it's just a social, having fun, being goofy post, and those are perfectly great. But save your intellectual property. Save your impassioned speeches that go on 10 pages long. Save that for a blog post on your own website and share it so the rest of the world can find it. I know it, you won't get the same dopamine hit, but the benefits are far greater long term. See what the question is. A catch twenty two. I don't know exactly what you're talking about, but <laughs> it's, um, but that's funny. I used to not even know what that meant. Okay, so here it is telling you to use social media campaigns, but blogs, podcasts, YouTube channels. Again, save your intellectual property. Save the things of value that you take the time to create. Let the automated clip cutters for your videos and other content that you can share on social media, you use that to bring people back to your platform. That's why you put your website, the link, the blog link, all of that in the description. Um, I The opportunity for all of you right now, in my opinion, is uh, education and educate about what you know because there's probably someone out there that needs to learn it. I mean, you know, we always talk about like we, or we don't always talk about, but I used to hear all the time, old man strength. Like you don't want to get in a fight with an old man because they got old man strength. And it's not that 
I don't think that they're really stronger than, say, a younger person necessarily, but they have wisdom. And wisdom makes you pretty strong. And what I'm getting at with this is um, <laughs> wisdom, time, experience. There's value in that. So as much as I am all about the new media and what's available in the future, I wouldn't be as effective with new media and won't be as effective with all the new media without looking back to the past and really paying homage to what they've done. I'm Again, I'm going to sing Master P's praises. If it wasn't for Master P, I wouldn't be doing any of this. I wouldn't have learned any of it. Nipsey Hussle, the same way. Um, but like old school may be old school and some of the ways may be outdated, but the fact is they had to do things the hard way. So there's a certain level of wisdom that is needed. So I'm just going to seek, even though I'll look to some of the young people to learn different tricks, I'm going to look to the older generation to learn the foundational things that really, really matter to help me take the new technology and the new way of doing things to a whole new level because my foundation is strong. This is the problem with just jumping ahead and saying, okay, AI, I'm just gonna use AI and I'm gonna go into the blockchain, I'm gonna go into web three and I don't have any of the principles that I need to know and understand of how to really use all that properly. Those that just jump into web three and jump into NFTs and to jump into blockchain, they're basically operating with half-baked bread or they have half of a foundation. It's really rocky. It's not sustainable. Sure, they can have some success initially, but it won't be sustainable. These foundational principles, again, that we've taught the last four weeks are very important moving forward. And so it's good to learn from all sides. Look to the younger generation, look to the older generation, and you may be that older generation. You have something to teach. Those of you that have been in the music industry, those of you that know what it's like to deal with record contracts, you're a prime. Like, this is, if for those of you that know about record contracts and how all that works, what you can teach content creators is invaluable. It doesn't matter if you're musicians or not, because the fact is the people that are going to YouTube and TikTok and all these other platforms trying to you know, their focus is the monetization side instead of bringing traffic to their website, they're essentially living in a different type of slave system. The same way this, the music industry is a slave system with those contracts, it, social media is the same thing. It's the same thing. You're going there and you're giving up your intellectual property. You're giving up most of what you've earned. Oh, me sharing opinions can help or hurt. Absolutely, JJ. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I always like it when people say, may I give you feedback? Because that will disarm me. Because, you know, sometimes I'm not in the headspace to hear someone's opinions. Um, yeah. So these, the platforms, policy and legal advocacy, legal advocacy online, um, I've used online to fight for prisoners, you know, and, 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 you know, people choose the different things that, that they're going to do. But for me, it's fighting for the voiceless. It's fighting for the disabled. It's fighting for the underserved. It's fighting for prisoners, trafficking victims. And so this is how we've mobilized support in the past. And in, in, in all fairness and in all truth, um, that's where I got my first lesson in needing better discernment. You know, working in the anti-trafficking world, you find out a lot of these people that pretend to be heroes aren't really heroes. Um, so, you know, this gets into back to media literacy and discernment and learning how to figure out if this person's a bad apple or not. And look, everyone makes mistakes. And trust me, those of you who have read my first book, <laughs> I, know, I know a couple of you here have, I made a lot of mistakes, and, uh, you know, so people do change. People do turn their life around. God has this amazing way of um, transforming people's lives. 
Yeah, especially if you allow God to transform your life. Um, so it's not to say that everyone's bad or it, it's not like that, but you do at least get the opportunity um, if you're media savvy and you take the time to to discern and to do some research into people that you're trying to support, you can see where the money goes. You can see who they support. You can see what they're about and you can make up, you know, you can find out who you are uh, not getting. There's got to be a better expression than that one. Um, who you decide to do business with. You can make those decisions much easier. Um, inclusive advocacy addresses various forms of discrimination, amplifying diverse voices within the disability community. Um, so I don't really, when it comes to advocacy, sometimes there's some rules that I don't necessarily understand. Um, those of you that are waiting to find the right group to fit in, I don't, know if that's necessarily right the, or the right way to go about it. Um, I want to encourage you that if you have something to say, if you have something on your heart that's to share, get busy sharing it because your tribe will find you. These other groups um, or the other communities that maybe you're wanting to serve, they'll come find you. But I got to tell you, when you try to force your way into a community, it doesn't go well. Um, I mean, my whole experience in Minnesota has been like that. I and mean, not a knock on Minnesota at all. I've tried to show up and serve everywhere I've gone, and it hasn't necessarily, like, they. I it, if I wasn't invited in, it was a disaster. Uh, positive uses of technology for mental health support, um, teletherapy platforms. So those of you that are therapists or no therapist, or you need a therapist, <laughs> or you need counseling, or you need support. And this really, this page here is for you. Um, talking to AI, to be honest, has been probably the best therapist I've ever had. Although it'd probably be better hearing it from a human. <laughs> Some of the AI chatbots have been a blessing, as weird as that is to say, but they have been. I use meditation apps, um, mindful, you know, YouTube, of course, to listen to things to feed my mind the right way, to do trainings, to learn other things, to learn how to 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 cope. You know, one of the things with having ASD and DID is that I coping skills suck. Um, change sucks. Not, you know, when I'm not sure what's going on, it sucks. Um, so you know, I have to go feed my mind with good things before something else creeps in my mind that gets a little crazy. And then, you know, I'm off in another planet somewhere. So these are, there's so many great resources for those of us who struggle with mental health issues. And at the same time, these are also business opportunities. So those of you who want to create an online community, I actually, there's a few people here that their whole mission is to build communities. Um, so I think this goes, some of this goes without saying, but establishing clear community guidelines, set the rules and keep them. Set the, those rules in your community are boundaries. And if someone doesn't respect your boundaries, they're not going to respect anything else. That's in life, that's in your community, that's in love, that's in your job, that's in everything. So uh, effective moderation strategies, training moderators in mental health sensitivity to balance free expression with the community safety. You don't wanna be a censorship freak. I mean, on top of that, why would you not wanna know if your enemy was sitting right in front of your face? If I was dealing with a homophobic racist douchebag, I want them to talk because I would like them. I would like to hear that they don't like me very much. I would rather hear that than silence. Like silence drives me nuts. Um, but I would rather know someone was a bigot or whatever uh, than them being silenced. And I just can feel it because like feeling that energy from someone is way worse than hearing it. That's my perspective anyway. May not be true, but, you know, it's good to have moderation and, and have some wiggle room there. But at the same time, people start harassing, being mean, saying violent things, being a racist jerk. Then you got to cut them off. 
but give people the opportunity to speak and have conversation because sometimes conversations and perception may start out a little funky, but through dialogue and ma mature conversation, seeing some pretty amazing things happen. People get converted to a new way of thinking. It's happened to me. It's happened to me through just being willing to listen. Encouraging positive interactions. Um, reward people for being positive. Encourage that behavior. Encourage it. Because um, there's plenty of negative stuff to say. There's plenty of negative stuff to say about AI. There's plenty of negative stuff to say about the blockchain and Agenda 2030 and the government and the presidents, all the presidents for that matter, all the politicians. I mean, we could talk about all the negative stuff in the world, but let's talk about, if we're going to talk about something negative, offer a solution. But for the most part, let's have a positive mindset and share that because that is infectious and that um, will spread like a good kind of wildfire. Okay. Um, providing resources and crisis support. I mean, I know it's easy to go, well, the church should do that, but it doesn't always happen. Not a knock on the church. A lot of the places that we go you that you would think would have crisis support and providing resources may not. Be that person. You could develop a community of just being a support system for people with ASD, people with DID people with other disabilities or people with, uh, I mean, you do do it for pets. I don't, I mean, what cancer, HIV, but creating a community and providing resources is a very, it's a very powerful thing. Like be the go-to person, be the resource. There's a ton of value in that. And of course, have representation. If you, if you say that you're diverse and you care about inclusion and all of that, then make sure you're inviting an inclusive and diverse group. Um, let's see. Okay. <laughs> we talked about this too. Okay. So here's the opportunity for you. With those of you that um, oh, my phone rang. Yeah, hold on. Ah. I wish that part would go away. Oh. So those of you who don't know, my phone rings, or I get a notification that zaps me. Um, okay. Got to take time away from technology. One of my favorite things, like, so my website and platform is almost completely done. It'll be done tomorrow, and my books are up there, but like some of the other stuff that's being done to it will be officially done tomorrow. And as soon as that's done, I, I'm going to step away for technology, unless if I'm going to broadcast or record a video, but that's going to be very limited. Screen time is awful. Like, it, it, it affects your eyes, um, and there's so many wrong things about it, so it's good to take a break. And I yeah, literally just I, I, for myself, I'm such a fiend. I'm an I'm an addict. I'm an addict. Like I I've kicked a lot of addictions in my life, and then you know, and then it seems like I just trade them. So like I've good healthy addictions now, but when it comes to my phone, it's kind of like oh, I don't have my phone on me. I got to look at it real quick. I got to look at it real quick. And how many times a day do I do that? I have a watch that ch that counts my steps. I'm pretty confident that at least 5,000 of the steps are me doing this, you know, looking at my phone. <laughs> so step away from the computer. And that's the thing about AI and utilizing these tools. It should allow you to, if you build your platform, which is the hardest part, if you build your multi-media monetization platform, your work is just becomes to create. And when you create high quality to the best of your ability content and put it on your website and then use the clips to market, you have less time in front of the computer because you've got your platform. Your only job is to create. You don't have to go out and hustle. You don't have to go out and sell. Your creation is the marketing. You going out in the community, you going to the gym, you going to church, the synagogue, the mosque, 
whatever you go to, you're marketing yourself. So when you think about not saying hi or smiling to someone that you walk past, think about this. You're the business. That's the responsibility that you have with your platform. Everywhere you go, you're the business, man. So keep that in mind. Um, I'm Break some technology, taking a break from social media. I did that. I'm, I've been on for three days. I'm all ready to take a break from social media. Um, just posting positive stuff on social media. That's a good thing. When you start posting opinions, sure, you're going to have people agree with you. But think about how much time you spend arguing with other people online. It's awful. Um, incorporating movement breaks for ergonomics. Take walks. My watch just went off to tell me to get up and start walking. Um, I even got my steps in, and it's already telling me I need to get up and walk. I've been sitting down too long. Thank God for that, because you know why? Because if I wasn't doing that, I'd stand in front of a computer for 18 hours and not move because my eyes are locked in and I'm stimulated and I'm not moving. So I, this reminds me to get up and walk and break things up. And you know what? Sometimes I get so sucked into the technology or it, when I is well when I wasn't wearing the watch that it would alter my mental health and just zoned in and like hyper focused and geeked out on this like whatever it, you know that I'm I'm working on and then the thought of breaking away from it it's like no and I just become like an animal about it but that's not healthy so for all of these changes with technology it's not an excuse to use it more it's actually there for us to use less. I know that's hard to believe because it's like, ooh, all of this fun stuff. Because AI will help you create. You can get addicted to creating, you know, and you start creating too fast, which I'm guilty of too. It's meant to use and walk away from. This is to give you time to spend with your family, the people you love, your new brides. By the way, and Tom got married. Everyone... Congratulations. So opportunities for mental health professionals in digital spaces. Um, I don't know if we have any mental health professionals here, but you can switch this out for coaching, consulting. Um, you're a lifestyle. You're a brand ambassador. You know white labeling. You uh, know the product formulation process. You're a teacher. You essentially can use all of this stuff. Webinars, workshops, um, you obviously you need to stay updated on digital ethics and regulations because, well, we're all in media now. That's part of the fourth industrial revolution. So you want to understand this. And the HIPAA is not necessarily involved in that. But, you know, you, these ethics and there's going to be changes in the laws and how things are done. So you're going to want to pay attention to that. Um, creating It says creating digital health. Uh, content, digital mental health content that could be diet content that could be education content whatever you, you can interchange these um, online teletherapy services you could do online webinar or online zoom sessions all that's there for you uh, let's see no more gosh you guys in the questions we're almost done it's gonna be so sad I'm gonna cry um yeah, so this, I was talking before about where they have access to the internet and where they don't. I, I guess that slide's not in here. I thought it was. <sighs> but anyway, um, like I said, the, the internet, the Internet Affordability Act, they didn't get funding this last round, so the internet prices went back up for low-income housing. That's a problem. Like, we have all these lotteries. We have the lottery, we have the Powerball, we have casinos, we have all this stuff all over the place. And we can't fund the internet. Maybe if we stop fighting, never, I'm going to get, no, I'm going to get political. It's the last one. I don't care what happens. Maybe we should stop going to war. Like, you know, we, we spend a lot of money in wars. There's a lot of government waste. There's a lot of, just a lot of waste. Like we should demand more. Instead of, and look, I'm all I'm all for world peace. My nickname's the world's mayor. I I, I love the world. I love people, all religions, all races. I I, 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 but 
We got to take care of our communities first. That's why your voices matter so much. Your independent, free voices matter so much because that's how we heal the communities. When you heal the community, then the community will take action. When the community takes action, that community spreads into the town, the state, the country, the world. You can duplicate quicker by focusing on what's right in front of you, the people in your own backyard, the people in your church, the people in your mosque, the people in your synagogue, the people in your neighborhood, the people at your gym, the people in your school. Start there. Because if you build there, it'll grow, it'll duplicate. People will see what you're doing, and they're going to want to duplicate it. Be that leader. My is that leader. I know what she's doing. Y'all want to get involved in community projects in Minnesota? Connect with Mai. I mean, heck, intom has got an amazing media website who's going to grow and build it out and do some really new, fun, innovative things. But he's community-focused and mission-minded. Um, so build the communities, and you'll change the world. So, oh, and part of that, too, is when you're serving the community, you can organize people easier, and then you can go fight for initiatives, like making sure that the Lifeline program is available to all. And this is not just in America. We need this worldwide, in my opinion, if, if we want everyone to have an equal shot at success. Okay, so this is, I do have the stat here. So 85% of the world's population owns a smartphone. Pretty, that's, that's pretty neat. But only 50% worldwide own a computer. That's a big gap. And I know the world's really big and lots of, you know, I think, what are we, 8 billion people now? So 4 billion people don't have a computer. Think about what we have. And I can guarantee you that there's a big percentage out of that group that doesn't have a laptop that is hungrier than you ever dreamed of being. Hunger for success, hunger for money, hunger for food, hunger for clean water. People that have seen injustices that we can't even imagine. You know, there's all kinds of different slavery. Um, you know, the organ harvesting, which is, you know, comes from slaves. Um, there's the brick kiln slavery, the labor slavery, human, you know, the sex trafficking, there's the labor trafficking, there's, I mean, there's all kinds of it. And then there's the slaves that, you know, there's a type of slavery that other people are not even aware of that they're all part of. I mean, there's our own debt slavery and our own financial slavery, but there's also the fact that some of us are caught in a box of trying to monetize YouTube, trying to monetize social media. And we're putting all of this energy and work into something to grow a channel to only get paid 10% of what you're worth. That's insanity to me. So I'm telling you all, these countries that don't have the laptops and access to that, but are using their mobile phones to create, watch what happens when they actually get a computer and good internet because they're still learning all the skills. They're not making excuses. Don't you make an excuse. Um, responsive, so uh, I'm gonna compromise media for uh, faster loading, compress media. Oh, so one of the things if you're gonna self-host that you should learn to do, this is just a, a, a side note, is compress the media. One, it'll make your videos run uh, way faster. Your websites will run way faster if you compress the images, you web optimize them. Um, but then even if you're going to self-host and upload your content, for one, you want to do this for storage space, um, but also it'll make your website run faster is if you're going to upload an MP4s to compress it. And um, what's the name of that platform? It's called Handbrake. 
if you're looking for a free platform to compress video content and also upgrade it to make it look better, check out Handbrake. It's free. Um, mobile banking, government services, uh, GPS, location-based services. So, I mean, there's there's a lot of businesses and other things that are here, um, you know, and opportunities for you all. Um, yeah, so anyway, let's see what else there is. There's not a lot there I wanted to talk about. Okay, so if you're looking for community-based digital literacy programs, check your libraries out. Um, I know that in Northfield, there is a library that has tons of digital literacy programs all the time. Odds are your local library is doing something similar. School and after-school programs, um, there's tons of that, whether it's a college, university, high school, you know, there's programs available. Get your kids in it. Don't keep your kids from learning this stuff. In fact, if your kids are on social media, teach them media literacy. Teach them what you've been learning here. Because if they can go on TikTok and make a really fun video, they can monetize their gifts and talents by hosting their own content. And sure, they can still use social media, but the habit they start now of sending people to their website to go check out their book, to check out their content, to check out their services, their courses, whatever, they start that habit now, it is going to pay off big time for them. And if you want to reunite your family, start working on creative projects together. It's a beautiful thing. Um, community center programs. I mean, this is kind of a community center program to, to a degree. <laughs> um, <clears throat> let's see, mobile training units bringing digital literacy to remote areas. Uh, yeah, this is neat. Check out the Google's Internet Bus Project. That, for inspiration, definitely check that out. So learning programs, culturally sensitive approaches, like that's something that um, I need to learn. Like, I don't know every culture. I try to learn and I try to be respectful. And, um, you know, because I, I want to be respectful to other people's needs and, and what they want from me. But... You know, and it's but at the same time, if we have a different culture, we have a different way of thinking and believe and we want people to communicate with us differently. We need to be compassionate, kind and patient enough to discuss it instead of just getting angry and shutting down and saying, no, I'm not going to talk about it. Screw you. You know, because that doesn't accomplish anything and we're not teaching them anything. I don't. So uh, this is just maybe a weird example, but. The whole pronoun thing. I don't necessarily understand it. I don't judge people who do it, but I don't get it. I don't even know what pronouns I would call myself. But for those that want to be addressed by their pronouns, because I'm a yes, sir, no, ma'am. But if you don't identify as either, I don't know what this like. I don't know what I say to be respectful. It's just things like that. There's other things that are cultural, like some people you don't do this to like, means something different. Um, some people don't want to be slapped on the back or when you talk to them, you, you give them a half hug and like, Hey, what's up? Like culturally, some people don't like that. So if people are doing things that we don't like, especially if you have a mental cork and you, you think differently, um, it's up to us. Like we can choose to be offended or we can take the time to communicate and educate. And that's another opportunity that's available for you with your platform is you can educate, you can teach. If you wanna, like if you're bothered by the way that people communicate with you because culturally it's off and doesn't make sense, educate, educate. Don't be afraid to ask questions. And at the same time, don't be afraid to get an answer you may not like. I remember, uh, so I, you know, I, I, I've shared this before, and I'm just going to talk until you ask questions because I want you to get your free money's worth. <laughs> so I'm going to just talk for the next 30 minutes. So here's your chance to ask questions. But one of the things that, you know, I've always been drawn to are different religions, even though I grew up in the Baptist home and, you know, kind of walked away from that and then kind of found a new, my faith within that Christian world and, 
And then that faith evolved and grew and, you know, it changed where it wasn't so much religion, but it was just a personal faith and a personal belief and, and a personal relationship. And that's what I was focused on instead of trying to get everyone to think, believe, and convert people. But even with that said, when I was homeless the first time, it was a Muslim woman that took me in. And I'm new. I'm new to my faith. I Here it is. I have been homeless. I was only two weeks, but I go and I, I, I you know, this, I, she, I had, she took me in. And I didn't, I'm like, oh, well, I thought Muslims like hate us because, you know, after 9-11, that's what we were told. And I didn't really believe that because every Muslim I knew, I loved. But the news, the media, all that. So I'm here it is. I'm moving in. And uh, she took me in. And you know what? Different beliefs, different relationship. But I learned more about God and prayer from that woman, from talking to her and listening to her, than I ever did from any preacher. And I'm not knocking any faith or belief at all. I'm just saying like that happened. And the reason why is because I just ask questions. The other thing, too, one of the things that I've heard so many times um, about Muslims or Muslim women is the force to wear their is it hijab? Is that how you say it? Ah, I just messed that up. Um, they're forced to wear it. And it's a way of it's a way of you know suppressing women, of holding women back, of like making them slaves, I guess, you know, making them obedient to man and to God. And this is forced on them. I've been told that, right, from um, the media. That's where they talk about and different things that you see on social media. Well, one of my friends, Sahara, um, is a Muslim, lives in Dubai. And when I asked her when she was on my show uh, about it, she said, it shows her. No one told her to do it. It shows her. That's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing. And I, But think about, I go through the rest of my life assuming that every Muslim woman who wears hijab, they're, they're treated poorly. And they're not respected and they're not held high. That was the furthest thing from the truth. And so, you know... These different perspectives are when we're, 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 we're looking to be inclusive and looking to build community and looking to for diverse viewpoints. We can't be closed-minded. We may have our beliefs. We may be a Republican or a Democrat. I'm not either, but either, either of those. Um, but at the same time, I have Democrat and Republican friends, and I love them, and they have wildly different opinions than me, but it's also interesting, and they're kind-hearted. And so, you know, it's worth having these conversations. We might realize that maybe we're not the enemy after all, but these honest conversations help create that atmosphere. You want to create healing in the world and understanding and bring people together? We got to listen. We have to be willing to hear things that we may not agree with. And that's also part of what happens with independent media is that you set yourself up to hear things that you may not like, but you also have the opportunity to share what you feel led to that other people may not like. It's not a contained system like social media where you can get reported or fact-checked or somebody can try to shut down your account. It's not like that. Way different. Okay. Uh, JJ says, I resided with a Muslim family for a year while in grad school. Amazing experience. I, I'm telling you, I learned more about prayer. It was so, so neat to me. Um, it helped my prayer life, changed my life forever. I and, and 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 that's the other thing too is that when you open yourself up to different perspectives and different personalities and different ways of thinking and being, ways of living, and you know, it may cause us to question our own beliefs or what we thought we knew, that's a good thing. Because how great is your faith if you can't have it tested? Of course, there's like 15 different meanings in that statement, but nonetheless. All right, life-changing, I love that. All right, is there any questions? Ah, okay. Um, 
what else should I tell you all? So I told you about IMDb, the importance of that, and registering your content there. Um, I want to make sure that I get everything out. We covered so much in the first two, especially because I kept interrupting myself in the program and going off on tangents. So I think I covered a lot of it. Oh, the best way to find your tribe online. That's a great question. So for me, it started with Facebook Live. Now, that, that, that did it for me because I started getting shared into different communities and started meeting different people. But whatever message that you share online specifically, and, and you put that out there on any, whether it's your own platform or a social platform, your people will find you. Now, if you're going to do it on your own platform, it's important that you're, you know, doing the right SEO. Um, but the other part of that, too, is you can also share those same links into your social media, uh, onto LinkedIn, into news aggregator sites like Medium and Flipboard. And um, uh, Reddit is another one that's great for SEO, where you can put your links. So you just start with that. And to me, this is just a personal opinion, but I would rather rip the Band-Aid off immediately and start sharing what I'm about and talk about the lessons that you've learned. Share your story. Start with sharing your story. That's the answer, Kelly. Start with sharing your story. You can choose whatever platform you want. You can choose one platform and then just multi-purpose the content. Um, but I, I, I say start with your story because Web3 and the new internet systems really are less about what you have to sell and more about you. I know that's weird, but it's about authenticity. It's about the human experience. It's about creating a fair and just world for all. That is the motivation with a lot of these future platforms. So you want to find your tribe, your community, your ecosystem. Start sharing your story. Start sharing what you're about. Start sharing your gifts and talents. Then you'll find them. If you're producing a live local concert event, What's the best way to attract people to attend the event? Well, I already know this question. We've already talked about this. Um, but for the people that haven't, it's the same thing. Like, I've been to your website, Kelly. It's a great website. Music video is cool. Great band. Uh, really great band. It's kind of the same way that other people do. You have your, I would have your music videos on your platform. I would use Cut Labs, and there's better clip generators, but Cut Labs is free for two months. For I think it's still free for two months. You can take advantage of that. Take your music videos, right? You have them hosted on your website. And then those videos you cut into clips with an AI generator in the descriptions. You have, you know, you're talking about what the song, to see the full video, click this link. And it's your website. Boom. Send people there. If you're promoting, yeah, the, the uh, oh, you know about it too, Jose. Cool. Okay. So you can use those clips to say, hey, we're going out in concert. Boom. Here's the tickets. You can put that in the link. But again, I would sell the tickets from your website. I would... You know, so the link is a ticket link that is on your website, or the link is as um, the link is a full video of your music that you know that you share on the clip. Um, that's one way, for sure. Um, the other thing too, Matchmaker. It's on a dating website, uh, Matchmaker FM for podcasts. You're a musician. You can post in Matchmaker saying, hey, I'm looking for uh, doing interviews. We've got a concert coming up and want to be hit up. Another thing you can do, 
don't tell the owners of E360 TV I told you to do this. <laughs> but you can go to networks like Binge, the Binge TV, um, E360 TV. Go look at their shows. Look who the hosts are. Every single one of them. Some of them charge to be on their show now, but a lot of them are looking for guests. And so you can get yourself booked there also, and you can promote on other people's platforms. That's Those are some really inexpensive, uh, free ways that you can start promoting your concert. And then you can go old school by using flyers and going to the flea market and putting, <laughs> putting flyers in cars. I mean, you can do that too, but as far as online goes, clips are the, the easiest free marketing you can use. TikTok, um, YouTube, Facebook, which is Reels. You can use all of that. Oh, glad you like the ideas. And yeah, so I want to encourage all of you who haven't, go check out Kelly's website. Um, it's, it, there, it's it's amazing. I, I'm, I, I'm not even kidding. I The music is so great. Uh, the band dresses up like the characters and it, it's... I, I personally believe um, Kelly and his band are like in the virtual world would do amazing. Oh, that's another thing, Kelly. Here, I'm going to put this in the chat. Uh, so Arrival Space, I just put it in the chat. Arrival Space just upgraded their software, so it's getting better. It looks better. It's... Um, like it's it's going to improve. A lot of these virtual spaces are. So a free way of marketing your platform and your music videos and your podcast is go build a virtual world in arrival space, attach it to your website. Because here's what will happen. So you have your website here. That's, you know, so Google, Bing, whatever they you, they they'll send you send traffic, you get people coming in from social media, but then you have your rival space and a rival space is your virtual world. Well, when you attach it to your website, so then you've got people here in the real world that are being funneled, they go, oh, virtual space. Then they come up in your, your virtual space to check things out. That's one way they find the virtual space and get to see all of your content displayed in this, these virtual walls that look like artwork and you can showcase your talents. But then, inside of a rival space is its own ecosystem that is not part of Google and Bing and all that stuff. So there's people that are up there in the virtual world that come into your platform because they have access to it and they can come check out your stuff too. So then they, you, that's another way that you can mark your, market your music videos, your books, your video, anything. You can market. it. So that's free. Take advantage of that. Um, David said, oh, thank you, David. I appreciate you. The other trainings are probably more interesting, um, but they're on my website. I'll put my website in here for you. And it's under Fresh Multimedia. You'll see the first three. I just spelled my name wrong. That's embarrassing. Here we go. Okay. David, right there is uh, my website and the trainings are there for you to do. <clears throat> uh, if you want. The PowerPoints are included. I think session two has two PowerPoints. And, you know, some of this information crosses over. That's why you saw me in this presentation kind of like, okay, that's redundant. Don't want to go over that again. There, There is some of that, but this, all of this intersects in so many different ways. And, you know, it's, uh, it's just a lot of information, you know? Try to present it in the simplest way possible. Well, listen, uh, we have 10 minutes left. I'm going to still stay here and chat with you, but I may just start being goofy and saying stuff because I have 10 minutes to kill and I don't want to sell anyone short, but it is a good time to ask your questions. Uh, strategy questions, if you have an existing business. Oh, that's another thing. You have an existing business. It doesn't take a whole lot for you to 
turn your organization into a media first organization. There's no better person to promote what you do than you. Not a robot, not a virtual assistant. Let you be the face of your own organization. And you're like, well, I don't like my face very much. Well, you know what? I don't like my face either. But I'm the one talking about what I talk about. So I need to show my face. Showing your face matters. It just does. Hiding behind an avatar is not authentic and it's not real. Yes, the avatars are fun, but show people who you are, especially if you're going to use this platform that you build or you use any of the media. Say you don't build a platform. Say you decide that you don't want to take on this undertaking and you only want to use 1% of what I've told you. Great. Great. Because if you use 1% of it, it's still going to help you. I recommend all of it, especially those who have an existing business, one that's already established, because this is going to be so much easier for you. The other thing I want to encourage you to do, if you have a team of people, elevate your leaders. It's one thing being in an organization and saying, well, I've got to be the face of the organization. Yes, that's true. That is true. But instead of I'm the CEO and I'm pushing people down so you only see me, don't do that. It will not work for you like it may have it used to. The whole idea of the new financial system, the new worlds, Web3, everything else is about elevating people. So if you have a team, it will behoove you to help their individual brands. So um, president, vice president, CEO, director, whatever. So there's four people, right, of an organization. I, I, again, no matter how many people are there, your leadership to help them establish their own individual brands. In other words, let them showcase there are other gifts and talents. I know that sounds crazy. Like, what a second. What if they become more popular than me? Great. Because if you've built the platform where their content is going and they're, you know, they're promoting themselves, they've got their podcast or giving them, like, if you're the owner of the company, you're the one that can set the boundaries and the rules. But at the same time, you want their star to shine. You want your leadership to shine because it only helps you and it only helps the organization. Oh, and it very well could help them too. But here's some things that'll take pressure off you. No one's going, no job that will be available in the future is going to be a 40 hour a week job. It won't, I don't, I don't believe it's going to be that way. So you know, collaboration, multiple revenue streams, that's going to be important for everyone. So you want your, your stars and your leadership to shine. Let them make some extra money by showcasing what they have. That's no big deal, but they're still representing your company. And you can put those rules in place, but it behooves everyone if you elevate their star, because overall, it's going to elevate your media organization, which is the vehicle for every business in the fourth industrial revolution. Media is it, it's the vehicle. And Tom says, any tips for how you can turn a non-revenue generating news site to start generating revenues? Well, you can start with turning on, um, what's it called, your, your Google ads, um, where you let Google put ads on your website for you, because you have a news site, um, you should do that. Because let Google place ads on your site. That That's a revenue generator. But remember also, AdWords. Thank you, Eric. Appreciate you. I don't always remember all the words. <laughs> Thanks for looking out, Eric. Um, so we were talking earlier. So, Intom, you, on your site, you're basically sharing other people's news articles, but it's your news aggregator website. So one of the things that I mentioned to you to help with your traffic and monetization is that you can do very similar to what they do with music videos or um, content where you see the person sitting there, they're watching a video and they're just commentating on top of it. Like you see that a lot on TikTok. Well, <clears throat> yes, David, thank you very much. Um, 
So, so what I was suggesting to Intom earlier was that he's got this content, it's not his. So he's not really getting web traffic. And by backlinking these website links or these news links on his platform, he's really only benefiting the other platforms. He's not really helping himself. But the way he can help himself and benefit on that backlink is by creating new content on top of the news article. And that new content could be as simple as this. So I read this news article. I've got an opinion about it. I want to share my own perspective. I'm sharing that on video. So the news, so I've shared this on video. And then right below my video, I have a description of what I'm talking about, what I'm saying. Okay. So that will help you with your SEO and it'll help with new traffic. And then you're going to benefit from this other link. However, on video, everything on the screen is monetizable. Product placement. You can do call it, you can put things on your screen to sell. You can put ad space here. Doesn't TV advertise like that? You can do that. And anything on the screen is monetizable. So then even below where you've written something that's unique about this article describing your video, there's affiliate relationships that you can monetize. There's banner ads that you can sell. You're a new site. So you can treat it like a business and sell packages to advertise on this link. So those are some of the ways. Affiliate relationships, product placement, live reads, all that helps. Okay, next question is, if you wanted to, now we're getting to real estate questions. Good thing I grew up around real estate. Let's see what this says. Um, if I wanted to sell, wait, if you wanted to buy, sell homes offline, of the MLS in a specific market like Texas, what's the best way to find people that must sell their home quick due to pending? What's this have to do with media? I'm just kidding. Um, to sell their home quick due to pending foreclosure sale, the specific class of sellers need cash quick and often have properties unfit for normal home sell loan as they may be in very poor condition that would not pass mortgage company inspection, plus they're not. Uh, plus they don't have any time for buyers to get loans in 30 to 60 days. Hold on. Let's just try something really fun, Kelly. Bear with me. Because I don't know the answer to that question. So hold on. <laughs> just, oh, here, I'm going to put it in the chat for you. Give me just a second. I knew someone was going to ask me a question I couldn't answer. Oh, wow. There's all kinds of stuff here for you. I, I, I wish I could take credit for giving this really great answer, Kelly, but I can't because I'm using chat GPT. And there's all kinds of information in here that I'm about to put in the chat as soon as it's done talking. Here we go. That's crazy. I apologize for, uh, I'm not, I guess I'm not that, I can't copy and paste that. Here, I got it. Hold on. I'm going to share my screen so you can see it. Okay. I'll send this to you, Kelly. I don't know why I can't copy and paste it. Um, but if you email me, I'll send you this. There's all kinds of information that came up. Wait, what is that? That's not my question. This one right here. Yeah. So public records, foreclosure listings, direct mail campaigns, networking with real estate professionals, networking with bankers. Uh, this is driving for dollars. Yeah, if you want this, I'll send it to you. Uh, or at the same time, you could just put what you asked in um, chat GPT and get the same answer I did. <laughs> but that's a good question. Let's see. Oh, you need my email address. Okay. Um, if you just contact me on my, well, I'll just give you my website. Or my email. Okay. Any more questions? Let's see. Oh, can anyone have an IMDb account? 
That's a good question. Um, don't create an IMDb content. Uh, don't create an IMDb account until you have content. Um, I mean, you could go get your domain if you wanted to, but it's not going to benefit you unless if you, you know, have content. But ideally with IMDb, you know, if you've been in commercials, you have a podcast, you do special video series, you have an OTT show, which is basically Apple TV, Roku, Amazon Fire, even a YouTube show. You can register that on IMDb. Um, my beard? Oh, I um, I haven't had a beard. No, I think I shaved it. I don't know. I forgot. I think I've been shaving for a while. Um, hey, thank you, Jose. Thank you for being here. Really, really appreciate you. And yeah, thanks to Score. Let's see. Um, so anyone can have an IMDb account. Yes, but don't don't get one until you have content. I mean, you can go just look at it, get your name and all that on there. That's fine. But I wouldn't pay for it. I wouldn't pay for it until you are really know that you want to be serious about this. But after that, put everything you create on there. Um, okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this has been awesome. Thank you. I am truly humbled for the opportunity uh, to talk about this. Thank you all for being here and all of your questions and your comments and your support and all the people that reached out um, for extra stuff, like thank you, because I, I love people that are hungry to learn. So appreciate you all. Thank you. Let's see. Yeah. So I'm gonna read this from Jose real quick. Uh, I am Jose Cano. I don't know if that's how you say your last name or not. Forgive me if I was wrong. He is interested in helping bridge the gap that exists between Asian countries in the U.S. and the use of AI in education through an app. His app is cool. The idea is awesome. While participating in Future Proof Your Media Business, I decided to give it another try. If anyone is interested, feel free to contact me through LinkedIn. So I've seen this app. It is really neat. It's inspiring. Um, and I think that it has a lot of potential. So there's a lot of, again, there's a lot of brilliant minds that have been sitting in here that have been learning. Um, again, I can vouch for a lot of you because you've reached out and I've heard what you've had to say. And I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for you. Grateful for you being here. Arnold, thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Thank you, George. Really do appreciate that. Um, yeah. And Tom, you're a blessing, brother. I, I really do. I appreciate your friendship. Uh, you are a true brother, man. Thank you. Okay. You all, blessings to all of you. And uh, truly humbled. I really am. It means a lot. Uh, you guys can follow me if you want. I'm on LinkedIn. You can find me on social media. Just look for my name. I'm there. Would love to stay in touch. Love to be of support. Uh, love to be a resource. So thank you all. And all right. I'm shutting it down. God bless.